our continent comparatively is not raising as sharply its sense of place in the world as it relates to others. In other words, the African discourse is primarily domestic in scope with the absence of a cohesive foreign policy element which I believe is absolutely central not only to how Africa relates to others but as a mirror projecting its own image back onto its own domestic program. So in other words, I don't see any differentiation between domestic policy and foreign policy. I think they're totally integrated. Somebody once said, all politics in the final analysis is local. So who are we? What do we stand for? What is our place in the world? At the moment, there are probably 54 contradictory answers to that question. We accept that this is not entirely of Africa's doing. The infamous Berlin Conference of 1884 had a far-reaching impact and had in many respects precipitated our, our current position where we have 54 diverging responses to fundamental questions that ought to, uh, to define Africa in the 21st century. I strongly believe that this phenomena of 54 diverging answers is the Achilles heel to setting the foundation for a genuine African Renaissance because a cohesive and coherent worldview would underpin Africa's ability to take advantage of a set of favorable prevailing circumstances that have emerged in the last 15 years. I'm of your view that there were roughly eight factors that created a fortuitous enabling environment that would underpin the prospects for a real African re renaissance. Okay, these were number one, collapse of the Soviet bloc and the geopolitical shifts it precipitated. Increasing democratization of Africa. I think uh, Nigeria going from military to civilian rule in 2000 or uh, 2001 was absolutely fundamental. It had a very cascading impact on this continent. Uh, the debt forgiveness um, was also a very crucial event, which was led, I think, by President Becky and uh, President Obasanjo. Uh, of course, we've got a very youthful population. It's got all sorts of benefits from a commercial and marketing perspective. The closing of the uh, digital divide is taken for granted. Um, a country like Nigeria and many other African countries went, they skipped the copper age, so to speak. Um, they went straight from that to digital, and it's got a huge impact. And then, of course, we are always grateful for economies that are fueled by the Chinese resources growth and need. And number seven, it's the financial crisis. Um, I think if you combine the balance sheets that were cleaned with the debt forgiveness, the Europeans and everybody else over borrowing, and then the financial crisis, African governments found themselves in a very pretty position, which we can't take for granted. And then lastly, the old discoveries on the African East Coast are absolutely enormous. 20 years ago, nobody could have imagined the growth you'd see out of Mozambique and Tanzania and Kenya and so on. So what I'm really saying is that in reality, Africa has a very attractive platform from which to stage its renaissance. Um, and I will not go through all the detail, a billion people, 12% of the world's oil production, um, close to 80% of the reserves known to man in base metals, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So even the highly conservative economist publication has changed its title from The Hopeless Continent, uh, you may remember that publication, I think it was in 2002, to a series of very, very positive articles and stories more re recently. Given this background, the question is, why Africa cannot leverage of this and have a more assured and confident sense of place in the world. It, it is my contention that the reason that this enabling environment is not yielding the results that it could yield is due to a large void in Africa defining itself in a comprehensive, historical, cultural, political, and 
sufficiently commercially integrated manner uh, so as to provide a sense of place and position in the world. 